Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Ghost here once again with another episode of True Conservative Radio. And once again, I'm your host. They call me Ghost. And uh, we're going to be conversating for the next couple of hours about true conservative conversation, that sort of thing. It's been a testy week in the political world, at least in American politics. And for you all over that are listening all across the world, if you all are in the outside looking in, you'll know that there's a lot of, uh, I mean, I don't even know what to say, whether to call it uh, optimism or skepticism or lunacy. I, I don't know what to call it out here, but it's been pretty pathetic. Anyway, I know that uh, they had the cor- the social liberal coronation in California, I think it was on Wednesday night, where, you know, the social liberals uh, got together in the Reagan library and basically anointed the social liberal that's going to be running as the president, or as I should say, as the Republican presidential candidate and that sort of thing. And I'm not going to make any kind of uh, any kind of remarks on that or anything on the Republican side tonight. I'm going to wait for tomorrow. I've got a whole show for tomorrow about what's going on in this Republican Party. All right, this social liberal coronation that they had at the Reagan Library this past week was an absolute disgusting uh, piece of social liberal trash. I mean, it, it made me want to puke. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, is this what the Republican Party is? Look, I don't want to. I don't want to get into it. It's going to be a whole new show tomorrow. Hopefully, y'all are tuning in. It'll be the same place, same time, Saturday evening, 9 p.m. Central Time. Like I stated, it's a whole show. I'm going to be going off about that social liberal piece of trash, John McCain. I want to be going off about the Republican Party, period, because let me tell you something, folks. Like I've stated over and over again, the social conservative movement has been shut out, has been isolated by the Republican Party, and if you don't believe me, and and look, I know I said I'm going to wait till tomorrow to comment on all this garbage, but let me tell you something, it's pissing me off every time I look at one of these Republican debates, all right, I'm getting a little upset about it, so I just want to make one thing clear to everybody before you tune in to this show tomorrow, because tomorrow I'm going in two hours into the Republican political aspects of everything. Just look at what what happened here. Look what's going on. We, you know, the social liberals that you know basically have hijacked the Republican Party have anointed John McCain, one of the leading Republicans that has basically split the Republican Party in half. All right, they've anointed this social liberal piece of trash, I guess, to be the front runner of sorts. Okay. And, you know, the only social, supposed social conservative on the ticket is this ridiculous religious zealot in Mike Huckabee. And I've said that over and over. I've said that Mike Huckabee is a tool by the social liberals. They're making social conservatives look like a bunch of religious zealots, a bunch of nut jobs, a bunch of nut cases via Mike Huckabee. And, and, and the Republican Party's trying to shove that down our throats like that's social conservatism. But Mike Huckabee is a religious zealot. He is not a social conservative. He is a tool being utilized by the social liberals to subjugate and basically make uncredible the social conservative movement. But anyway, you notice that the supposed social conservative on the ticket, Mike Huckabee, whose side is he on out there? Who does he keep embracing, so to speak? Who, who is it? He's, he's embracing the social liberal John McCain. And that just goes to show all of you that Mike Huckabee, the supposed social conservative, this religious zealot, this, this, uh, this tool being utilized by the social liberals that have hijacked the Republican Party, the supposed social conservative on the ticket is embracing the social liberal John McCain, it just goes to show you that uh, it's an unfortunate situation we've got going on in the Republican Party. Anyway, that's about all I'm going to go into it right now. 
Because, like I said, we've got a whole other show on the agenda. We're going to be talking about the Democrats. We're going to be talking about what they've been doing. And the unscrupulous tricks that they're diving into. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me break it down to you like this, okay? For all those who want to hear about the Republican Party, I'm going to be talking about it tomorrow, so tune in. Tomorrow, Saturday, 9 p.m. Central Time, I'm going to be here and I'm going to be going off. But we're going to be talking about the Democrats, you know? The Democrats, I tell you, are probably the, the most despicable group of people on the face of the planet. And if you happen to be a Democrat, by all means, I beg you to give me a call right now, all right? 646-652-4869. And this goes out to all you left-wing, long-haired, liberal, bedwetting hippies out there, all right? I'm talking to all you Democrats. Give me a call right now. Give me a call, because let me tell you what you Democrats are doing. You are throwing our country back 50 years I'm saying it again. You're throwing our country back 50 years in race relations because you nimrods over there want to bicker and battle over who's going to be the anointed uh, liberal one on the left of the political persuasion. I mean, it's just absolutely disgusting. And we're going to talk about that this evening. We're going to talk about that. So if there happens to be anybody who is uh, African American who's listening to us, uh, I, I, I urge you to call in because this is a racial show because the Democrats have made it a, a, a racially motivated race. And on top of which, they've added gender to it with this uh, Hillary Rotten Clinton over here. She's injected gender into the whole race. But we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about all the dirty tricks of the Democrats. And this is why I'm taking a, a little bit uh, of, of a pop shot at the Republican Party, because the Republican, uh, it seems to me that, that they're utilizing the same methods of agitation that these liberals on the left are doing out here. That's what they're doing. So, check this out. What's happening here is just a, a just complete array of propaganda out here, Okay. I mean, the Clintons, and just like the, uh, the, the title of the show suggests, or the description of the show suggests, the Clintons have systematically, all right, turned Barack Hussein Obama. They've turned him into the, they've turned him into the ghetto candidate. That's what they've done. They've turned this man into the ghetto candidate. Now, you know, everybody's, uh, I've gotten a lot of emails here, at least... <laughs> at least about 75 emails from people. Once I put this subject matter up as my topic of a show, I got all these emails suggesting that it's just too racial of a topic, Ghost. You know, it's just, it's too racial of a topic. How are you going to say that the Clintons have turned Barack Hussein Obama into, into the ghetto candidate? Well, it's very simple. And we're going to explain that tonight. We're going to explain what's going on in the Democratic Party. These ridiculous, left-wing, long-haired, liberal, bedwetting, hippie communists, because that's exactly what they are. And I'm going to show you their little dirty tricks on what they're doing. They're, they're ba- you know, you got the Clintons over here, uh, basically, because they've turned Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate, it's basically won the Clintons hands down to be the anointed ones on the left. I mean, and if you all think that Barack Obama has any kind of a shot, you're, you're dreaming, all right? You need to wake up, you know what I'm talking about? You know, hello, McFly, you need to yank yourself out of the dreamland over there, because what the Clintons have done here, what the Clintons have single-handedly have done, that they've just turned this man into the ghetto candidate. It's ridiculous. It's sad. It's a sad day in American political history when you've got the supposed... And I say supposed party for the ethnic minority people of our land sitting here making a, a, a throwing our, our country back 50 years in race relations. Now, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about why this is happening, how this was happening. What am I even talking about, the ghetto candidate? Well, let's take a trip back, shall we? 
And let me tell you something. If you're a Democrat that's sitting over there playing with your little uh, schlong head, you're playing with your schlong head over there, you know, getting upset at me, and, and instead of writing me some strongly worded email, which I get about 150 of a day, why don't you give me a call? Grow some, just grow a pair, all right? Get some st- t- testicular fortitude and give me a call, Democrats. Give me a call right now, 646-652-4869, if you think I'm lying. Give me some substance right now. You're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to do it. You're just going to be tickling your anal passage, uh, pr- probably to, to some ridiculous garbage that you're uh, reading, probably some Gloria Steinem or, or Karl Marx rhetoric, and you're not going to see what I'm saying. So take your blinders off for a second, and maybe you'll understand. Now, let's take a trip back, shall we, okay? Barack Obama, okay, once he first started coming up as a presidential candidate, do you remember that? Oh, everybody was just, yeah, just optimism looked like it. It was just the aroma over there on the left of the persuasion. Everybody, you know, they, they were still swooned by that 2004 Democratic Convention speech. You know, they, they were so swooned by the man. He was just ar- articulate. He's uh, well-spoken. He's young. He's, he's an outsider. You know, uh, the, the whole nonsense. Okay? Well, when he first entered the campaign for the D- Democratic Party, I mean, race was not even an issue. Do you remember that? It wasn't even an issue. Nobody was talking about it. I mean, as a matter of fact, it was on the back burner. All right? It was on the back burner. So, I mean, he, he was basically swooning people with his, uh, I guess, his, his message and his, his articulation of, 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 of words and his, his kind of poetic sense of what he represented as himself. Okay, that's what he inspired people, apparently, over there on the left of the persuasion. <clears throat> and now, for all those that are uh, political junkies like myself and everyone else, all of y'all, do y'all remember... Just to take a, just think about it. Do y'all remember who Barack Obama's base was? Who, who was his base? His base was white liberals, folks. It was these white, left-wing, long-haired liberal hippie bastards. Do you remember this? I mean, I mean, there was a question at some point. I don't know if you folks remember this. There was a question on whether or not Barack Obama was even black enough to be even labeled as an African American. I think a lot of these social mouthpieces for racial inequality, which are, you know, I'm not going to say anybody suggested this, but people like Al Sharpton, people like Jesse Jackson at the time, I mean, these people were questioning whether or not Barack Obama was even, you know, African American enough to even claim he was African American. Okay, so we're, do you remember this in time? I hope all of you are with me at this time, because it wasn't that far back, folks. It was basically maybe about maybe eight months ago. Anyway, when he won Iowa, in Iowa, who, what was the electorate? More than ninety percent of the folks out there were white. I mean, that's where, you know, that white liberal uh, contingent that he had mesmerized, that's where it took forth. That's where it gave it, gave it resonance that, you know what, you're right. Barack Obama has penetrated the liberal mindset. And what did the, what did the Clintons do? You remember around this time after Iowa was, was won by Barack Obama, what did the Clintons do? Remember those reports that came out, oh, uh, in today's news, uh, Bill Clinton is upset at the way Hillary Clinton's campaign was run. Do you remember those reports? I remember them. And I was like, well, who gives a blue hell's crap what the hell Bill Clinton says or does? He's, you know, get in the back burner, have a cheeseburger. All right, do something else, Bill. And what happened right after that? Yeah, the New Hampshire primaries, which was pretty much in the bag anyway. I mean, anybody who knows the whole history behind the Clintons in New Hampshire knew that the the New Hampshire race was in the Clinton bag. There's no doubt about it. But then came South Carolina. Whew. Let me tell you something, folks. You better 
acknowledge the Clintons' political savvy and, and, and their absolute abs- absence of conscience when, when, you co- when you just take a look at this South Carolina crap, all right? South Carolina, what is it, 55, 60-something percent of the electorate is, uh, is African-American. And now, uh, before I even get to South Carolina, I want to remind all you folks, remember, I was suggesting, and it was obvious, that before South Carolina, Barack Hussein Obama's base was white liberals. You know, the white liberals that, that found substance in his charisma and his message. White liberals that, you know, invested so much into his campaign. White liberals, okay? Now we get to South Carolina. We're in South Carolina now. More than, you know, more than 50% of the electorate is African American, okay? And remember, Barack, Barack Obama was, you know, questioned by a lot of social mouthpiece out here whether or not he was even African American enough to call himself African American. Well, the Clintons seized an opportunity here in South Carolina, folks. And let me explain. And listen very carefully, because you may not believe me, but it's obvious what happened here. Clinton, obviously, you know, he's president twice. Uh, He's utilized the media to basically lie to the country. I I don't know if you all remember when he turned the Oval Office into the Oral Office. I don't know if I have to remind you... (laughs) Remind you about that. But the bottom line is, is that he understands what the media is. He understands how the media takes charge. The media is a corporately ran entity. And what does that mean? Well, the the media wants you to watch, no matter what it takes. You know, I mean, they don't want to give you real news. They want to give you something that you're going to watch, that you're going to keep your eyes on, that you're not going to flip the channel with. So he understands this. Let's, now, now, now let's get to South Carolina. Well, Barack Obama did a great campaign out there in South Carolina. Went to some uh, went to some impoverished schools. You know, tried to blame the hypocrisy of of our government's public education system. He utilized that many times. Anyway, Bill Clinton all of a sudden starts coming up out of the woodwork. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, he came out out of the woodwork in Nevada. Remember, he started poking his finger in, in, people's, in people's chests. He was like, hey, get out of my face. I'm Bill Clinton. I'm Slick Willie. I turned the Oval Office into the Oral Office. You can't mess with me. <clears throat> and then he started injecting race subliminally. I don't know. Y'all can look back, YouTube it, do whatever you want, chronicalize it, and you're going to understand that Right after the, the, the chess pointing in Nevada, this man started, hey, wait a minute. I'm going to inject race subliminally. What was the first thing he said? He was like, I'm going to go door to door in South Carolina, even if I have to go door to door to black churches to make sure that we get South Carolina. And then he repeated over and over that, that Barack Obama was an African-American. They kept, he kept pushing the issue. Remember, I mean, this is not, I'm not making this up. He, he took the, the basic media steam that Hillary was getting, he took it all and he put it on himself by subliminally putting race into this campaign. It was racially motivated, racially divisive, and he kept doing it. <clears throat> now, what happened here, folks? Media took storm of it. Media, me, media even suggested that, you know what, the Clintons are utilizing race. They, it was all over every mainstream media outlet. And what happened? It mobilized the African-American community to say, hey, wait a minute. We do have an African-American running for president. And, and let me tell you, the strategy of racially dividing the country by the Clintons, all right, by subliminally putting race into the South Carolina uh, primary out there, it redefined the demographic of who Barack Obama's base was. That's right, it did. Because before South Carolina, Barack Obama's base was social uh, white liberals. White liberals. The people that won him Iowa. 
and those folks. And with this South Carolina race, because the Clintons, especially Bill Clinton over there, subliminally injecting race, kind of racially, uh, kind of divisive issues by, by suggesting and openly admitting over and over on a consistent basis in the media that, hey, Barack Obama's a black man. I mean, that's basically what he was saying every time he, he injected race into the campaign. And it mobilized the African-American community. Not only in South Carolina, but all over the United States, in my view. And what did the media do? The media knew it. The media even talked about it. They even talked about Bill Clinton going out there injecting race into the campaign. I mean, they were even questioning on whether a, a, a previous president should even do such a thing. So what did the media do? They understood that there was some, some, some kind of racial tension going on in this campaign, so the media goes in, and they go into uh, African-American communities with uh, reports and makeshift focus groups and, and reporters, and they go in and they, they ask African-Americans, hey, uh, who, who are you voting for? And the African-Americans, you know, by and large say, hey, well, we're voting for Barack Obama. We're voting for Barack Obama. And then when they ask him, these idiot media people, when they ask him, well, why are you voting for Barack Obama? You get all kinds of answers, a whole mosaic of answers that have nothing to do with politics. And you see, you see, folks, the Clintons redefined the demographic, the, the base they redefined the base of Obama. I mean, most of these responses, when the media went in and asked the African-American community, hey, wh wh why are you voting for Obama? Oh, well, you know, Hillary Clinton's already been to the White House. That was one response. Another response, uh, I'm voting for Obama because he has nice teeth. Uh, another one, you know... Uh, Obama just, you know, he, we, we just need a black man in the White House. I mean, just nothing that has to do with foreign policy, economics, uh, um, <laughs> um, health care, nothing. It, it, and you see, the media took wind of this, and they, they basically subliminally, with the Clintons' help, remember, the Clintons were the ones that injected this racial divide into this campaign. The media took storm of it. The media documented, y'all remember this, folks. Don't think that I'm just pulling this out of my dairy air out here. I mean, this is what the media did. The media went into the African-American community just asking random, random uh, African-Americans, who are you voting for? Barack Obama. Why are you voting for him? Oh, because he, uh, he dresses nice. He looks presidential. He talks well. You know, not, nothing that has to do with politics or the issues. So what do the white liberals do? You know how, how you know these these dumbass white liberals they like to claim they're so much for the minority, they're so much for the uh, you know oppressed in society. What do they do? They abandon ship on Barack Obama, and they're going right now. They're putting all the money in Hillary Clinton's campaign. They're they're, they're campaigning for Hillary Clinton, and they basically turn Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate. They just ghetto fight him, man. Anybody who doesn't see it is a moron. And you want this as your leader? Democrats? Hillary Clinton? The Clinton people? They're, they're sitting here uh, throwing race relations back 50 years? This what you want? It's ridiculous. Absolutely sick, folks. Uh, the Clintons and the, with the, with the media's help, folks, with the media's help, they turn Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate. Just ghetto fight him. I mean, I, I, it's sad. I know many people are probably a little upset about it. I'm sure a lot of the African American contingent that listens to my show is probably a little upset. Probably don't believe me. You don't have to believe me. Just look at what happened. Look at what happened. Like I told you, 
What was Barack Obama's base at first? What was it? I mean, just just go back. Before the, the primaries even started, Barack Obama's base was white liberals. That's what they were. They were white liberals. <clears throat> and what did, what did the Clinton administration do here? <clears throat> what did they do? And they did it in South Carolina. Because remember, South Carolina, more than 50% of the electorate <clears throat> is African American. So Bill Clinton just subliminally, he didn't have to directly say anything. He just had to suggest it. The power of suggestion, folks. That's all he had to do. And they turned Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate. Just absolutely disgusting that the Clintons can sit there with a straight face and say that they're for the minorities, they're for the ethnic minority groups, they're for the oppressed, and they can sit here and throw our country back 50 years in race relations. They should be ashamed of themselves. And you know what? When I saw the debates... With the Democrats last night, I was appalled. It's obvious that uh, Barack Obama at this point has sold himself out. You know, he, he's already sold himself out. It's obvious. I mean, if, if I were this man, the way they ghettofied Barack Obama, I would have went for Clinton's jugular. I would have been out there and said, hey, woman, you're sitting here trying to turn me into the, the ghetto candidate. What about you? What about your husband that was impeached? What about that guy? Oh, turn the or, or the Oval Office into the uh, Oral Office. What about that guy? Huh? I mean, you're sitting here. I, I remember. I could recollect Miss Clinton, Hillary Rotten Clinton. I could recollect you getting on a morning show one time and saying, uh, "This is a right wing conspiracy. This is a right wing." It was jack crap. That's what it was. The problem is, Hillary Clinton, you can't control your husband. You don't know what's going on right underneath your nose. And if you don't know your husband and you don't know what's going on right underneath your nose, how the hell are we supposed to expect you to run this country, you liberal piece of feminist trash? Why don't you answer me that? I mean, these Clintons are disgusting. Throwing our country back 50 years in race relations... But it's, it was, just, it, folks, as racially mortifying as it is, the Clintons have basically submitted Barack Obama. He is not going to be the presidential nominee for the Democrats because of this move right here. Because the Clintons, by subliminally injecting race into that South Carolina primary, because they subliminally just injected it. You know, I mean, Bill Clinton, remember, he was all over the media. You know, all he had to do was say, oh, yeah, you know, you know that black guy, Barack Obama. I mean, he was just, just subliminally injecting race throughout that campaign. It, it, it mobilized all the African-American contingent in South Carolina, and not only in South Carolina, but all over the United States. And by doing that, they redefined Barack Obama's base, folks. I mean, before South Carolina, Barack Hussein Obama's base was white liberals. That, that was the people that gave him all the money. Those were the people that supported him in Iowa. Iowa's like 90-something percent white people out there. And they supported him because race wasn't an issue until, until Bill Clinton came along and started flapping his little yapper about, you know, and highlighting the fact that Barack Obama's an African-American and they redefined his base. And the media, like the morons that they are, they went in to every African-American community they could find. And, and let me tell you something, with all due respect to the African-American community, I think the media tried to purposely go into the, 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 most, the, 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 the most impoverished, the most uneducated portion they could find. Because they, what did they do? They went in there and they would ask any African-American in there, hey, hey, who are you voting for? And they would say, well, I'm voting for Barack Obama. Well, why are you voting for Barack Obama? Well, because, you know, he's got good teeth. Or, hey, it's about time for a black man to be in the White House. Or Hillary Clinton's already had her time. I mean, all kinds of collateral just ideas and, and views 
outside of political substance. Do you understand? I mean, the media, with the, with the Clintons' help, Remember, the Clintons subliminally injected race in that South Carolina primary, and then you got the media highlighting the fact by going into every African-American community out there asking them, well, hey, who's your candidate? And, and, and what did this do to the original base? The original base of Barack Obama, which were white liberals, the ones who won him Iowa. What did this do to them? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's what it did to them. And they turned him into the ghetto candidate. Now, whether or not the liberals, uh, it was race, racist on their part, I don't know. I can't speak for those white liberals that don't support Barack Obama anymore. Let's switch sides and went with that ridiculous uh, uh, Hillary Rotten Clinton. I mean, because they jumped ship. Those white liberals that supported Barack Obama in Iowa, and, and prior to that, they're all jumping ship because, let me tell you, the Clintons have redefined the demographic that supports Obama. They redefined it in that South Carolina race, and I just don't understand why nobody, nobody understands that. Nobody understands that. It's disgusting what the, what the left is doing here. They're throwing our, our country back 50 years in race relations. Nobody wants to talk about it. It's ridiculous. But like I stated, like I stated before, just because the Clintons have turned in uh, or turned Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate, it doesn't mean that Barack Obama has any kind of scruples either. I mean, if you saw the Democratic debates last night, I mean, if I were Barack Obama, I would have went for that Bull Dykes jugular. That's what I would have done. I, I, I would have I went for a jugular. I would have, I would have, I would have went off about the impeachment, the white, the right wing conspiracy garbage. Her, 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 I mean, you can go on and on about her whitewater deals, and, and I mean, you can just go on and on about this piece of trash. They're dirty. I mean, Barack Obama, if you're listening to me, or if somebody that knows him is listening to me, tell that, tell him that the Clintons turned him into the ghetto candidate. And there should be no way he should accept that. He was sitting there hugging Hillary, for Christ's sake. Did you, did you see that? Did you see that disgusting embrace there at the end of the Democratic debates? I mean, good, good God. Good God. It's ridiculous, folks. And yet I, I haven't heard or seen a Democrat grow the cojones Get on a damn telephone and give me a call here at 646-652-4869. I'm waiting for a damn Democrat. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. I mean, you Democrats should be ashamed of yourselves. All of you. Every single one of you. If you're a Democrat, look at yourself in the mirror and spit at it. Because that's what you deserve. Honestly, all you left-wing, liberal, long-haired pieces of garbage. I mean, you're letting our country down here, folks. It's just ridiculous. And, you know, and not only are you letting our country down with your ridiculous ideology and your policies of entitlements and all this other garbage, you're throwing our country back 50 years in race relations, for Christ's sake. Jeez. I mean, I just don't understand it. I mean, it's just the amount of propaganda that's, that's fed, obviously. That's the only way they can continue to have such a base of people. Because these people are pieces of trash. And anybody who tries to debate otherwise, I dare you. I dare your ass. Get over here and give me a call instead of, you know, probing your anal passage with, with a G.I. Joe or something. Get on the phone and give me a call there, liberals, if you think I'm lying, if you think I'm just off my rocker, if you think I'm just, you know, spewing off garbage off my head or something. You liberal piece of communist Karl Marx worshipping trash. 646-652-4869. We're talking about how the Clintons turned Barack Hussein Obama into the ghetto candidate. Like I said, 
you know, in the beginning of the, before the South Carolina primaries, Barack Obama's base was white liberals. They were the ones who put all the money into this campaign. They're the ones who, uh, you know, helped him get uh, the, the Iowa caucuses. Remember that? He won the Iowa caucuses, folks. Remember that? I mean, 90% of the electorate is white. The white liberals supported this man. That was his base. Before South Carolina, you had social, racial mouthpieces via Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson questioning whether Barack Hussein Obama was even black enough to be called African American. Do you remember that? I mean, you had these ridiculous social mouthpieces like that fat, ridiculous piece of trash Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and, and all these other poverty pimps. They were questioning whether or not Barack Obama was even African American enough to call himself African American. And, and, and the people that were supporting Barack Obama before the South Carolina primaries, all of them were white liberals. That was his base. That was the people that supported him, gave him all the money. But then South Carolina, which more than 50% of the electorate is African American, the Clintons saw an opportunity to inject race for them to win this damn campaign, and they should, they should be ashamed of themselves about it. Bill Clinton trying to orchestrate the media to put all the attention on him and not on his bull dyke wife. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he kept talking about race throughout the damn campaign of South Carolina. They wanted to sacrifice themselves in South Carolina. You know it and I know it. It's ridiculous. And let me tell you something. What happened? What happened, folks? I'll tell you what happened. It brought the African-American community together and finally said, wait a minute, let's not listen to these poverty pimps like Jesse Jackson and, and, and Al Sharpton, this is an African-American. We need to vote for him. And it changed the demographic of Barack Hussein Obama's base. And it changed the demographic to his base, folks. Remember, before South Carolina, it was white liberals. The ones who gave him Iowa, folks. And then once South Carolina came along... And Bill Clinton started subliminally injecting race into the campaign. It mobilized the African-American community. And what did the media do? The media knew it. I mean, the media saw right through it. I, I don't know if you folks were watching this, main, this ridiculous excuse of mainstream media out here. But they even knew that Bill Clinton was utilizing race as a divisive issue, like the propaganda agitating piece of trash that he is. The media even knew it. And what did the media do? The media went right into the African-American community with cameras. And they would ask him, look, why, why, why do you like, uh, or, or they would even ask him that. They'd ask him who they're voting for president. All of them, by and large, Barack Obama. Why are you voting for Barack Obama? All of them would say everything from under the sun except anything with any kind of political substance. I'm voting for Barack Obama because I, we need a black man in the White House. I'm voting for Barack Obama because he has nice teeth. I'm voting for Barack Obama because he speaks good. I'm voting for Barack Obama for this, for that. Nothing that has to do with political substance. And you know what this did to the white liberal? Let me tell you, once they started seeing this, the white liberal went, whoa. I don't think he's going to be electable. So you know what I'm going to do? Being the white liberal piece of gutless trash that I am, I'm going to go ahead and switch sides and go over to Hillary Rotten Clinton's campaign. And that's exactly what they did, folks. They turned Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate via the media, via Bill Clinton. They turned him into the ghetto candidate. Anybody who doesn't see that is, is just absent-minded or naive. I mean, you see these ridiculous Democrats. They're all trying to deny it, even though it's blatantly obvious that it's happening. These morons don't even want to admit that they're throwing our country back 50 years in race relations. And let me tell you something, Democrats. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. 
When this is 2008, you ridiculous, long-haired, liberal, bedwetting, tree-hugging, liberal pieces of garbage, you understand that what you're doing, just because you want the presidency so bad, you're throwing our country back 50 years in race relations just because you're power-hungry autocrats. And you think that's responsible? I mean, give me a break. I mean, I'm begging a Democrat that's out there playing with their pecker shaft right now. I'm begging you to grow a pair, get on the phone, and give me a call right now if you think, you, you think I'm lying, if you think I'm off my rocker. I mean, give me a call. 646-652-4869, you piece of trash. I'm waiting for any liberal, any of you Democratic pieces of garbage. You're throwing our country back. And nobody wants to talk about it. I mean, even the mainstream media is trying to throw, uh, throw these damn questions at these ridiculous Democrats, and what do they do? Ho, 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 ho. Well, I, I don't believe that that's happening. I think that the media is doing it. The media is doing it. You're doing it, you piece of crap. You're doing it. Because you know how to manipulate the media. Because why? You know the gatekeepers of media. All you got to do is call up these morons and say, hey, I got a story for you. I'm going to be on the corner of such and such with some unions or some poor people. Come over here and shoot me so I can look like a, like a real rebel, like a, like, a, like a person of the people. And that's what you pieces of garbage do. You liberal Democrat piece of garbage. That's what you do. I, I don't, you don't fool me. You don't fool me, all right? Just because you, you have utilized propaganda to maintain your, your, your power, to maintain your legitimacy, you've utilized the methods of agitation, you've utilized propaganda to mesmerize a whole group of people. Many of these people that you mesmerize, you liberal pieces of garbage, Many of these people that you mesmerize are people that are impoverished, that don't have a choice, that don't have the opportunity to do something. You want to know why? Because they were raised by your liberal education, public education system that isn't worth a crap. You liberals for the longest time have been utilizing education as your little crutch, as your little scapegoat. We need more money in education. We need bigger schools. We need smaller classes. We need more teachers. And we've done it all. And what have we produced? Nothing but, a, but, a, but an entitlement generation. People that want something for nothing. That's what we've produced. And you Democrats benefit off that crap. You don't think I see it, Democrats? You don't think I see behind your ridiculous garbage? I see it. That's why, you know... Uh, and I'm glad I don't see most of these liberals in my chat room. Folks, I usually get at least 15, 16 common liberals that come in here, flap their fat fingers on the keyboard, utilizing every method of agitation known to man, trying to distort my attention from my show and put attention on their liberal pieces of garbage ass just because they know I'm telling the damn truth. They know I'm telling the truth. I see behind all of you. And let me tell you something. And, and I, I know I wasn't going to get into this on this show. Tomorrow, I'm going off on the Republican Party tomorrow, folks. That's why you don't see true conservative Republican radio on my title anymore. Because the Republican Party has been hijacked by a bunch of social liberals. And anybody who's been keeping up with my show knows how I feel about that. And let me tell you, I'm going off on these Republicans tomorrow too, folks. Saturday, 9 p.m. These guys are pieces of garbage too, folks. They're, there's no in-between anymore. You, you're either going to have liberal or liberal. That's all you're going to You're going to have to eat it. You're going to have to eat it and like it. This is soil and green. Political soil and green is what you got here. It's disgusting. I mean, that's why, as a social conservative, I'm not voting. All right? And look, I'm not going to get into any more of that. I'm going off on those pieces of garbage of the Republican Party tomorrow, so please tune in to me. Tomorrow, 9 p.m. Central Time. But the social conservative movement needs to wake up and understand that we're being isolated. 
We're being isolated. And if you don't believe me, look at that ridiculous piece of garbage that they're trying to label as a social conservative. This Mike Huckleberry, or Hucklefin, or what, Huckleby, whatever his name is, all right? They're, they're utilizing, the social liberals that have hijacked the Republican Party are utilizing Mike Huckleberry as, as a laughing stock. You know, they're, they're, they're pointing to him and saying, hey, look, that's social conservatism. Look at this piece of trash. He, he's a religious zealot. He, he wants to turn the Constitution into something that looks like the damn Bible. And that's not what the social conservative movement wants. And anybody with any kind of real political foresight or into just intellectual curiosity knows it. Anyway, enough of that. Like I said, I'm going off on the right tomorrow. So you just get back to me tomorrow when it comes to the Republicans, because let me tell you something, I'm not holding no punches on those pieces of trash either. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of everything. I'm sick of it all, folks. Six four six six five two four eight six nine. Give me a call if you're listening in. I know that I, I'm all over the internet. There's, there's a, uh, we're broadcasted on a variety of different websites, and I just want to thank you for tuning in. If you want to get to the chat room, you can get to us at blogtalkradio.com/ghost and just chat with us live here. And at the same time, you can get back to my blog at uh, Conservative Ghost, all one word, no underscores, conservativeghost.blogspot.com. But this evening, what we are talking about, we're talking about how the Clintons have turned Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate. And it's a shame. It's an absolute shame. And for everybody who thinks that I'm just off my rocker on this, I just tell you to just look back in not too far distant history. I mean, Barack Obama's base, all right, when he announced his presidency, race wasn't even an issue when it came to Barack Obama. I mean, as a matter of fact, I mean, you know, he was still resonating that substance that he planted in that 2004 Democratic Convention speech that was so inspiring and that sort of thing. So when Barack Obama first entered in as a presidential candidate, I mean, he, he wasn't even, there was no such thing as race. I mean, race had nothing to do with anything. And we got the Poor People's Campaign out of Chicago in here. How you doing there? But like I said, race had nothing to do with it, all right? As a matter of fact, who was Barack Obama's base when he first started as a, as a presidential nomination candidate, excuse me. Who was his base? It was white liberals. Those were the people that donated into his campaign. It was white liberals that helped uh, Barack Obama win the Iowa caucus. Remember, Iowa is 90% white people. And they all voted for Barack Obama out there in the caucus. They all caucused for him. I mean, it was white liberals that was Barack Obama's base. But wait a minute. Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, they put their deceiving, disgusting, evil heads together. And then came South Carolina. And they realized that South Carolina, more than 50% of the electorate, is African American. And what did Bill Clinton do? What did Bill Clinton do? He started subliminally injecting race into the South Carolina primary. I mean, if you've been watching the mainstream media, you'll know. The media caught wind of it. They were even suggesting that it, you know Bill Clinton should be ashamed of himself because he was injecting race subliminally, and they knew it. And you see, this kind of disoriented Barack Obama's base because what did, what did this damn scumbag media do? What, what did these scumbag media people do? They went into the African-American communities out here in America, and they would go up with camera, cameras in their faces and say, who are you voting for and why? And the African-American community would respond, of course, overwhelmingly. They would say Barack Obama. 
Barack Obama. Well, well, why are you voting for Barack Obama? And like I stated previous, okay, they would say every reason in the book except anything that had anything to do with any kind of political credence. I mean, they would say, look, I want to vote for Barack Obama because uh, we need a black man in the White House. Well, I think we need to vote for Barack Obama because he has nice teeth. I think that we need to vote for Barack Obama because we need some young blood. I think we need to vote for Barack Obama because Hillary Clinton already had her chance in the White House. I mean, you had so many, so many responses when the media went into the African American community and said, "Why are you voting for Barack Obama?" It had nothing to do with politics, though. And you see, this kind of hit those liberals. Remember, who was Barack Obama's base? Initially, it was white liberals, folks. It was white liberals that was the initial base to Barack Obama. I mean, remember, you had racial social mouthpieces like Jesse Jackson and, and, and Al Sharpton and other poverty pimps out here that were saying, oh, well, I don't think Barack Obama's black enough. Remember that? They were, they were questioning whether Barack Obama was even African-American enough to call himself an African-American. Do you remember this, folks? This was not that long ago. But then when, when the Clintons, when those damn de 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 deceivious, just ridiculous, evil Clintons decided to say, you know what, we're going to redefine Barack Obama's base. Barack Obama has had an impact with white liberals. We're going we're gonna to try to we're going to try to steer away Barack Obama's base, and we're going to try to redefine it in this coming South Carolina uh, primary. And what did they do? They did it. They did the damn thing. Clinton, and, and you all can YouTube the damn thing. You, you can go back and, and video archive history. Every day for a damn week, Clinton was in the damn media just over, overriding any kind of media attention his wife was getting, so it was basically taking the heat off his wife and putting it all on him. And he kept saying racial uh, overtones, you know, in his speeches. You know, he'd always hint that, oh, well, that African-American Barack Obama, I mean, he always kept suggesting, he kept pushing the racial issue over and over and over again. Even the media saw that this was happening. But then when the media went out there and, 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 and they saw what was happening, I mean, before the African-American contingent out here would via Jesse Jackson, via Al Sharpton, were questioning whether Barack Obama was African-American enough, now, because Clinton injected racial overtones into the South Carolina primary campaign, now, all of a sudden, it mobilized the African-American community, and they all wanted to vote for Barack Obama. And when the media went into the African American community with cameras and, and reporters and, and all this garbage and, and sticking cameras in people's faces and saying, hey, who do you want to vote for and why? Overwhelmingly, the African American community would say Barack Obama. And like I stated, they, they'd give you all kinds of reasons why they would vote for him other than anything with any kind of political substance. And this scared away the white liberal, that was initially Barack Obama's base. It scared him away. It scared him away. I don't know if it scared him away because they don't like black people. I'm not insinuating that. Maybe it scared him away because they figured that maybe Barack Obama wasn't electable. Because remember, they hate George W. Bush. They hate the Republicans. So they're, they're looking for electability. And those same white liberals that donated into Barack uh, Obama's campaign, the ones who supported him in Iowa, the ones that, you know, brought him, brought him those initial big wins, what happened? Well, what happened to those white liberals that were initially Barack Obama's base? They jumped ship. They went to the other side. They went to that bull dyke over there, Hillary Rotten Clinton's uh, campaign over there, and they started donating to her garbage. Why? Because they turned poor Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate. That's what they did. They, they ghettofied the man. I mean, they turned his campaign into a circus sideshow via the Clintons, via the media. And anybody who doesn't want to acknowledge this doesn't know their ass from their elbow. 
I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's a shame what the damn Democrats are doing. I mean, and none of these liberals want to acknowledge it. They don't even want to talk about it. I mean, even when the mainstream media asks these liberal, democratic, long-haired liberal hippies, even when they ask them, oh, well, there's nothing going on racial in our campaign. Ha, 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 you piece of crap. You know it, I know it, and anybody with any goddamn common sense knows it, too. I mean, they're throwing, I mean, the liberals, the, the Democrats, are throwing our country back 50 years in race relations. And they should be ashamed of themselves, all of them. All of those people. Anyway, 646-652-4869 is the number to call. We've been talking about how the ridiculous, evil, Hillary, rotten, Clinton campaign has turned Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate. And, and I'm not just talking off my rocker here. That's exactly what they did. I told y'all why, and it's obvious why. I mean, it redefined Barack's base, man. I mean, before this racial divisive primary in South Carolina... Barack, Barack Obama's base was white liberals, man. I mean, they, they were the ones who won him in Iowa. But after South Carolina, who was his base? African Americans. And that's it. And that's why you've got these white liberals jumping ship over here. They're all jumping ship. And if you don't believe me, just look at them. And I guarantee, no matter how optimist uh, you are, all you liberals out there that are pulling for Barack Obama... I mean, just look at that debate that happened yesterday, folks. And that should make you want to puke up. I mean, that debate yesterday was the most ridiculous, lovey-dovey garbage I've ever seen. I was waiting for Barack Obama to go for the jugular on this bull-nosed bull dyke, and he didn't do jack. He didn't do nothing. He gave her a damn hug, for Pete's sake. A damn hug? I would have spit in her face. So what I would have done was spit in her damn face. I mean, what, what, what did, did, did Barack Obama bow down already? Does he know his role? Is this it? Has, has he had a talking to? Did they take him to the woodshed or some crap? He should have went for the jugular, man. He should have brought up the impeachment. He should have brought up how, he, how her husband turned the Oval Office into the Oral Office. He should have brought up white water. He should have brought up everything. But he didn't do jack. On the contrary, he just sat by. He gave Hillary Clinton a hug. You know, they just sat back and, you know, wanted to sing Kumbaya with each other. It's ridiculous. But you know what? This is what these liberal Democrats want. They want some piece of trash like this. They think that this is electable over here. Old Hillary Rotten. And like I said, folks, you know, I see a few people calling me here, and I know you folks are probably going to make, you know, some critical analysis about the Republican Party. And like I've told all of you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off on the damn Republican Party tomorrow, Saturday night, 9 p.m. Central Time, right here. Right here, so tell all your damn conservative Republican friends, okay? And tell them to get around the computer and listen, because I'm going off on these pieces of garbage that call themselves Republicans. These people are, are basically sticking a Kentucky Fried Chicken Grease thumb up their asses, calling themselves Republicans, when they know and I know and anybody with any kind of with horse sense knows that these people are social liberals, they have hijacked the Republican Party, and I am not going to, I'm not going to vote for a social liberal. I'm not going to do it. John McCain especially. How the, how the media and the Republican Party and the social liberals have anointed this piece of trash as the nominee is beyond me. It's ridiculous. But like I said, tomorrow, folks, I'm going off on the Republican Party. As a matter of fact, I don't really know uh, politically who, who the hell I am anymore. I mean, you got the Republican Party that has been hijacked by social liberals, 
And obviously, you got the left over here still utilizing their communist methods of agitation. So, I mean, you know, who, the, who in the blue hell knows politically where I'm leaning? I'm just a conservative, first and foremost. That's all there is to it. I'm trying to save the American family. I'm a social conservative. And anybody who doesn't oblige themselves to the social conservative thought, they're, they're probably a little off their rocker, if you will. 646-652-4869. We're approaching the second hour of True Conservative Radio here. I'm your host, the man they call Ghost, and we're talking about how the Clintons turned poor Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate. They turned him into the ghetto candidate, and we've been discussing this previous hour why and how it happened. And it, and it happened, folks. It's pretty sad how it happened, why it happened. I mean, the Democrats should all be ashamed of themselves, but, oh, they're going to claim that they didn't do it. They're just going to, you know, pretend that they, they didn't happen. But anybody with any kind of intelligence or common sense knows right what happened. The Clintons are a bunch of racist pieces of garbage, man. And they knew it. They are going to win the nomination at the expense of the African-American community. And anybody who doesn't see that or wants to acknowledge that is probably sitting there uh, uh, with a grand dragon uh, sheet over their head right now. And you know it too, Democrats. You know that, that the Clintons basically turned Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate just so they can get their power-hungry autocrat asses into the White House. You know it, and I know it. It's ridiculous, folks. Absolutely disgusting. And you know what? You're not going to have a liberal Democrat call up. You want to know why? Because they know it's true! That's why. I'm sick of these Democrats. Liberal, long-haired, bedwetting hippies out here. These are the same people that that think it's okay, uh, you know, for men to have oral copulation across the street from an elementary school. They think that's dandy. This is a liberal Democrat party you're talking about right here. You know, this is the same party that, you know, feels that women that, you know, have six or seven kids from six or seven different fathers is just some sort of social evolution or some crap. You know, this is your Democrat and liberal party out here. You know, this is the same party uh, that just wants to have at least, they, they won't be happy until they have about a million abortions a day. You know, they're not not going to be happy with that. It's ridiculous. It's just absolutely sickening to me. And you see, you notice, you're not going to have any of these liberal long hairs call up. You want to know why they're not going to call up? Because they know I'm telling the truth. They know that I'll make them look like mental midgets, all right? I mean, you know, they don't want to battle wits with me. They don't want to do it. I mean, I will cut them down lower than a leprechaun's nutsack because they know that I know what I'm talking about. So you can sit there and, you know, flap your little milly mouth gums at me all you want. I get tons of hate mail. I get tons of hate mail from people all the damn time, and you know what? You don't even have the cojones to give me a call on my own damn show, because you know I will assert myself on you so much that you'll be just, you know, on your knees in submission, boy. You know it and I know it. Anyway, folks, uh, for the past hour, hour and ten or so, we've been talking about how the Clintons have turned Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate. It's it's a sad, sick sight. Uh, The Democrats have thrown our country back uh, 50 years in race relations. Here we are, 2008, and we're still having racial uh, issues. It's just absolutely disgusting to me. I mean, it's 2008, folks. We need to throw this racial garbage in the trash can, okay? Now, when it comes to the borders, well, that's something completely different because I don't care where you're from. You see, whenever I make a reference to the borders, everybody always assumes, oh, you're a racist ghost. 
You're racist against the Mexicans, Ghost. You're a meanie. Well, you know what? I, I'm, I don't care where you're from. If you're here illegally, get the hell out of the country. Okay? I don't give a damn where you're from. If you're not from here and if you're here illegally, get the hell out. All right? Now, it has nothing to do with any racial things or anything that way. It's just a legal thing. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to smoke one of these little pipes here. You know, uh, like Sherlock Holmes or something. And I bought one of them at uh, my local uh, my local humidor place here. And, uh, you know, I like cigars. You know, I like to smoke Opus X uh, cigars and the greatest cigar on the planet. Legal cigar, that is. And, but I'm trying this uh, little pipe here, and uh, it tastes like crap. So I, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. And that's why you may hear me uh, cough a little bit because I spent about maybe what a buck fifty or not, well a hundred and fifty dollars I should say spent about a hundred fifty dollars on this piece of crap Chief Slapaho peace pipe over here and maybe you know another fifty bucks on the tobacco so I mean I, I better smoke the damn thing I don't just piss this money away or anything like that anyway. We're getting off on a different uh, subject matter, folks. We're talking about race relations in America at this point. That's what we're going to segue into, race relations. Because, folks, I, I just I, I don't like to hear ethnic minorities. It doesn't matter who you are, African American, Hispanic, Latino, uh, Asian, whoever. What we need to understand, folks, is that we, 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 we just need to stop with this racial divide garbage, you know? We just got to basically put it all to a side and just say, you know what, let's just let's stop doing this garbage. All right, race is race. It's all there is to it. I mean, let's talk about social order. Let's talk about how we're going to perpetuate peace. Let's talk about how we're all going to coincide and, and suppress the social ills and that sort of thing. Let's talk about freedom. How about that? Let's talk a little bit about freedom. But I think that the you know the Democrats and the Republicans they are all they all want the same thing in my view. They want more government. They all want more government. They all don't want they don't want to acknowledge whatsoever the social ills of America. They don't even want to look twice at it. They don't even want to talk about it. And that's what pisses me off about the Republicans. And that's why not only am I I'm only getting hate mail from liberal Democrats, I'm getting hate mail from Republicans too, folks. Republicans. You know, people that were on my side for Christ's sake. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm just, I'm just getting so worked up on this man. I'm I'm just getting I'm just getting so haywire. You know, I mean, you know, just all the garbage, the hypocrisy that's coming about out here is just getting me so upset. Sometimes I gotta lay back. It's like I'm doing now. I'm laying back on the couch, just thinking. You know, what are that? What the hell happened to our country? I mean, our country's going into a completely different direction out here. We're just letting illegal immigrants come into the country by droves. 20 million illegals out here. Both sides want, want to give them amnesty. These are the people that are uh, basically lowering the price of labor out here. And then we wonder why our damn economy's going down the tubes. I mean, I just don't understand it, folks. And then you got these damn Democrats, these liberal, long-haired, bedwetting hippies out here that are throwing our country back 50 years in race relations. All right, and I'm trying to I'm trying to calm down, folks. I mean, literally, you know, my heart is pumping through my damn chest right now. I mean, I I just got I just got to lay down and just think. I just got to think optimism, you know. I got to think this stuff because if not, I I I don't understand what I don't even understand what's going on here. I mean, I'm a Republican. My party's been hijacked by a bunch of liberals. 
I just don't understand. I just don't understand. It makes me sick. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to take a call here because uh, I think I'm about to pull my goddamn hair out of my head because I can't believe what the hell's going on in America! <sighs> anyway, 972, you're on the air. Ghost, what happened to all your liberal... The, the the liberals they're all gone. Yeah. I kicked I kicked their asses out because I don't want to I don't want to hear it anymore. I mean, who who the hell wants to hear this garbage? Oh, I'll say I checked out that uh that debate last night on CNN too with uh, Clinton and Obama. I mean, I mean, does doesn't it look like Obama just bowed down? Yeah, I th- I think uh, they they both kind of gave in to each other. If you want my opinion on it. I mean, it's like they just sort of gave it to each other. You know, it's like uh, I think a week ago they were going head to head and just beating each other up like uh, like I think Mitt Romney and Rudy Giuliani used to do in the old yeah. days. But now they uh, now all they're about is just embracing each other's opinions and just they're, they're real they're real soft about their issues. I mean, and well, well, I mean, I think that's horrible because Barack Obama and I, I don't know if you've been listening. I mean, he's been subjugated and suppressed into the ghetto right. candidate. I mean, well, I mean the, the the whole reason behind that is uh, these liberals, these Democrats, and some of these independents are all about the whole uh, demographic issues of a candidate. They only believe in supporting a candidate over little issues, their gender, their race, you know, with their heritage, where they come from, their religion. I mean, it's just little issues, and that's sick. It really is. Well, I just think it's sad. You know, if I were uh, Barack Obama, I would have went right for this bull dyke's jugular and said, look... Hillary, rotten. You're not going to be able to ghettofy me. Well, you got to remember. Man. You got to remember these are lib bellies. Remember these guys are, are soft on the issues. They're not about uh, attacking each other. I mean, so to speak. They're just more about. I mean, being you know, to say, well, well, while I agree with your point, here's my point of view. And instead of you know, like actually calling out the truth of what it is. Well, I mean, you know what I saw yesterday in that Democratic debate. I saw a man submitting, bowing down, basically saying, look, just, you know, put me in a cabinet seat and everything will be all right. I mean, I think he's a man deflated. Uh, I think he's – that's why I'm saying all these people that are pulling for Obama at this point, you could forget about it. I mean, the base has been pulled out from under him. I mean, the Clintons redefined his base by ghetto fine him, by injecting the racial divide in the South Carolina primaries – Mm-hmm. And now he's basically been suppressed as a ghetto candidate. And all the white liberals that initially supported this guy, they were the ones that made this guy's campaign. They were the ones that helped him win the Iowa caucus. Uh, now they're all jumping ship. They're over there at Hillary's side now because they think that Barack Obama's not electable because the Clintons made this man into the ghetto candidate. And I think well, it's disgusting and it's sad. It's a sad day in American history. Well, I do agree. I mean, uh, the, the media has been, you know, and a lot, of, a lot of the old Obama supporters were the ones that, of course, got his name out there. And uh, and uh, and of course, I like I said, I agree with them when you said the the media, of course, expressed him and such as the as the is he black enough candidate? Cause, I, mean, I used to see that all the time on TV. You know, is he black enough? I remember what, what they used to call him, uh, B Rock Obama. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, that's what I, that's what I was saying. Before this South Carolina primary, I mean, you had these ridiculous racial mouthpieces like your dumbass Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and these people that are that well, make their the, yeah. That's the thing too. They they don't represent the entire uh, black community. They only think they do because of their past their past history and and not not to mention they think of course that if they make a comment that the entire black community will follow their comment. If they say something good about Obama or say that because he's black we we need a black president in office, then you know, suddenly the entire black Well, they they, will they were him. they were talking bad about the man before South Carolina. I mean, they were they were questioning whether or not he was African American enough, which is nonsense in my view. Right. And and then when South Carolina came along and then you had Clinton, or the the Clinton campaign inject racial overtones in that entire div- the entire primary. Once that once the Clintons injected racial overtones, it redefined Barack Obama's base, which is just unbelievable. 
I mean, unbelievable. They, they turned Barack Obama's base from white liberals into basically all of the African-American community. And then when the, when the media caught wind of this, when they caught wind of this, they, the media went in with cameras and, and microphones in people's faces in the African-American community. And what happened? Well, they would ask him, Who, who's your candidate and why? Who's your candidate and why? And they would say, Barack Obama. And, and to me, I think that the, the media purposely went into uh, predominantly, course, predominantly impoverished areas and, and and they asked him, well, why are you voting for Barack Obama? You know, every reason came out except with anything with political substance. I think it scared away the liberals that initially supported Barack Obama, and that's why Barack Obama's finished for the campaign. See, but you, you got to realize too that these uh, a lot of these people that the in the black community that were asked the question, who are you voting for? They immediately said Barack Obama because the uh, community has been, I guess, I don't know how it modified in the belief that. If a black per- black uh, person is running for presidency, and I was like this at one time too, then you must support him because it's uh, it's about the uh, whole uh, the, the white man or it's like the man's keeping keeping us down and won't let us run for president, won't let us get any, anybody of our color in office. I mean, it's it's uh it's kind of sad. It's demographic, you know, that they base it on. They don't base it on you know any true research about him because you never hear him. You never hear the uh, information on, or on how he wants, of course, to give driver's licenses to illegals or how he wants to expand this war on terror. You just hear, you know, that he's black. That's it. You, you don't yeah. hear what, what's supposed to be. What's the? What is the? Uh, what, what, what is his reasons for running for president? What is he? What is he going to do that's supposed to convince me to vote for him? You just hear he's black. He has to, he has good speaking qualities. He has good teeth, like you said. And, yeah, I, I couldn't and, believe some some woman. Said, yeah, I'm voting for Barack Obama because he's got good teeth. I mean, you see, but you see, this is what scared away the white liberals that supported Obama. I mean, they saw this on the media, and and like I said, I don't, I don't know whether they looked at at the reaction of the black community coming together for uh, Barack Obama, and then the reaction to that, which is, you know, African Americans saying, hey, we're voting for Barack Obama because of, you know, all the, all the, all the the reasons I said previous that had nothing to do with politics, uh-huh. the, the the white liberal looked at that and said, well, hey, the, the Republicans are going to have a field day on this. He's probably not going to be electable. Uh-huh. Uh, let me go ahead and jump ship to the, the Hillary Rotten side and and uh, let me support her, which is... Well, see, that's what the liberals are about. Though. They're about you know using the issues that, have, that are the irrelevant issues that have nothing to do with the situation in politics and just you know, just exploiting them, even and exploiting that to the media, and letting and letting the media just spread it out like as if, well, he's black, so he must be doing something for this country. Well, he has he has good speaking skills, so he must be able to uh, fix this country. They don't expose anything on on his voting record. They don't expose anything about his campaign. They just they just oppose the earth. They just expose the. Um, <clears throat> irrelevant issues, and yet when when they get somebody like that in office, they and then you know then they wonder why. Uh, why, of course, they have so many enemies because he never gets anything done. You know, well, you know, I, to be honest with you, I mean, for the left, and I hate everybody on the left, but I, I really would would have liked to have seen Barack Obama as the nominee for the Democratic Party. I think it would have shown a lot on how far America's gone as far as rela- race relations is concerned. I think it, it would it would have said a lot. Now, would I have voted for him? Absolutely, hell no. Uh, but I, I just don't think we should. I mean, I don't think it's fair that we're going to see another Clinton running for office once again. And uh, be, the reason that we're seeing another Clinton was not because of any kind of political prowess. It was because of ridiculous, deci- divisive, uh, propaganda-based games uh, that the Clintons injected into this campaign, and they should be ashamed of themselves. And the Democratic Party should be ashamed of themselves also. Yeah, TV, Internet, uh, real world, wherever you want to go with it, it's like you ask them all the same question, and it's either I'm voting for Hillary Clinton because we don't need a black person in office, or I'm voting for Barack Obama because we don't need another Clinton in office. It's never what are the issues. On the issues, what are they going to do to make this country better, not what, who they, what's their gender, what's their color, or... <clears throat> oh, well, that's the that left. Background. That's yeah. the left for you. They're just... And 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 I had a I had a, a couple of shows back uh, that talked about how the Democratic Party is one of the most racist parties in history. 
They started I mean, the KKK, of course. Yeah, yeah, they started the KKK. It did, they were all adamantly against the uh, 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment of the Constitution. Yeah, well, uh, the, the problem with the uh, live the left side is that they always want to modify the uh, every one of the uh, rights that we have in our Constitution to, to the, so it goes in their favor, you know, so it makes them more credible, you know, or it makes them, of course, be able to break the rules and, and without actually breaking them. It's, it's just bad. Yeah, exactly, man. Anyway, uh, let me just give out the number again, 646-652-4869, if you want to chime in on anything. Uh, we're talking a little bit about this and that. Uh, we spent the past hour talking about how Barack Obama has been villainized and stigma- stigmatized by the being the ghetto candidate, you know, unfortunately. And it's because of Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. That's what it is. Yeah, I had a question too about uh, about at least the first Clinton. I mean, I, I get from the left side. Uh, I, I wouldn't, of course, I wasn't around during the uh, Clinton era, but uh, I've, I'm curious about what what is it that Clinton did that the Democrats love so much? You know, or was it was it the fact that Hillary Clinton was the one that backed him up that they loved so much? They had that she that she's really she was really in the because people say that she was in the White House really whenever Bill Clinton was in office because she assisted him on every one of his issues, but the problem of it, I mean, the, the dilemma I'm having is I don't see what he'd made better. You know, all I see is that there was a, there was a time period, there was an era that he was president that was already good before he became president, as a, basically because of the president before him, and he just got all the credit for it. I don't really hear much about what he did, you know, at all. Hey, he didn't do anything. I mean, to be honest with you, it, it, as a matter of fact, I just think it's just a love affair with uh, with Clinton, as a matter of fact, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that most women really wanted to sleep with him. To be honest with you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I know it sounds, <laughs> I know it sounds sad. I mean, I know it sounds kind of weird, but I mean, who was Bill Clinton's base? The soccer moms. Remember that the old, the old soccer moms. I mean, th- that was his base, and I think that the reason that the soccer moms liked him so much is because they wanted to bang him. I mean, I know, I know. I mean, hey. Hey, I know that sounds whacked out, but let me tell you something. I, I mean, uh, it's all it's all about demographics, man. I mean, that this Barack Obama campaign uh, against Hillary Clinton's campaign, it just goes to show you that if you redefine somebody's base, they're they're out for the count. And I'm glad that we're talking about this here on an internet forum, and I and I hope this goes down in internet history. Remember, if you're running for office, if you want to just cripple your candidate. Try to figure out a way systematically campaign, actually. to just redefine their base. That's what you need to do. Redefine who their base is, and you will cripple whoever your opponent is in politics. See, but the funniest thing is I know had Obama, had he throw, thrown it at Hillary about uh, the whole issue of her husband cheating on her, which we already know that's how he got impeached, um, she would have been speechless. I mean, I mean, all you did, all you did was see them... You know, they discussed for five minutes on an issue, then they started writing stuff down on a piece of paper. They discussed for five minutes on an issue, then they started writing down stuff on a piece of paper. It was never any jibs or jabs with, you know, a lot of their discussion. They just sort of were being, you know, were just being like moderate, you know. Yeah, and that's what I was saying about Obama. I think Obama has already submitted to Hillary. Uh, you know, he did absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing to combat uh, all the garbage that he's been taking. Because he's been taking a lot of garbage, believe me. I mean, mm-hmm. being I saw having the, uh, seeing in YouTube the uh, Democratic debate how he got those uh, questions about his his gender or first off his race and uh, stuff of that effect. I saw all that. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, that that was plain. It's just motivated to to, to just stigmatize this guy as the ghetto candidate. Well, the, and I think the, it's a shame because look, I don't agree with the man's politics. I think he's a liberal, you know, long hair, mm-hmm. but. I mean, he's an outsider. I mean, he. I mean, this is a man that, that's d- done what he had to do to to run for the presidency. I don't think he should be president, but I don't think that he should be isolated like they've done to to to, to him here in the Democratic Party by putting him in the same category as uh, like a ghetto fied candidate or something. I, I just think it's ridiculous what the excuse me what the Democrats have done. Well, you know my personal opinion, of course. Uh, I know of, of, as with both of us being conservative, uh, I mean, 
I know, of course, either one of us could care less who gets the nomination. But in the end, it, you know, when when you when you really uh, hone in on these little demographic issues, of, you know, about these candidates that have, that the media is basing the uh, whole debate and discussion on, you really know in the end who's going to get the, the nomination. It's like no one's going to support the black man, so I mean he's already out. I mean he might as well. No wonder he might he might as well just be passive about everything that that Clinton talks about, and then be moder and be moderate and just act like he supports it and all. But I mean that's why you saw him hugging hugging her at the end of the debate last Of night. course. You know it's just the the media has already you know sort of planned this out. You know Obama's not going to get the nomination. Clinton will. So I mean, he might as well uh, embrace whatever she talks about and accept it for you know what it is. I mean, they're, they're, they're practically, they have the same they practically have the same stances on every issue, but the only difference is he's he's a black man and she's a white woman. And exactly. You know, you know what the media is gonna you know the media is gonna exploit that and just and base it on that issue a, a light issue and there's nothing he can really do about it after that. So he might as well just go ahead and and when he drops out, just endorse her and and that be that. Well, I, I suggested, you know, a week ago or beginning this week uh, in my blog that Obama's campaign needs to go for the jugular. I was waiting yesterday for Obama just to go right at that broad's neck, and nothing, absolutely nothing came out. He could have come out about the impeachment, how, we, how her, her husband turned the Oval Office into the Oral Office, her whitewater crap. I mean, you know. Like he, how, from, he, went, he went from a, uh, how you, a liberal to, to a moderate. Yeah, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Obama just, you could tell last night he's already submitted to defeat. Mm -hmm. He's already submitted to defeat, and, and all these liberals that are out here still supporting him, uh, they might as well jump ship and go into the Hillary Clinton campaign just like the white liberals did, because it's a shame what these damn Clintons did to this poor this poor guy who's just running for president. Well, really, really, that's what they always do. You, you see, you'd think that, of course, everybody would be all would be all on the uh, Obama wagon and just in saying, and, and since, of course, everybody likes to use this uh, use the uh, fact that he's black as a as an, as an issue to vote for him. But uh, the funniest thing of, of it is, is people are using that as a way as a reason to not vote for him. They're, they're yeah. saying it. They're saying that uh, he's he's a black guy, and if he gets voted in office, he's going to get killed. So I mean, we might as well end up supporting Hillary anyway, because I mean she's white, and everybody will, respects a white per, a white president. So you know she she'll be fine. But if he gets in office, he'll get shot, and he'll and she'll end up being president either way it goes. And I'm you, you know I, I think I think America is ready for a black president. I just don't think it's Barack Obama. But I think that you know well, he I should mean, have America's a... always been ready for a black president. I mean it's just are you about the issues and exactly the uh, demographics exactly. And, and you see, what's unfortunate is that um, by Barack Obama being on the left of the political persuasion uh, and him running into that power train of propaganda in the South Carolina primaries, there's just no way he's going to be able to combat now. I mean, he, he, he should have went for the jugular yesterday during those debates, but he didn't. And now I know that Hillary Clinton's going to be the Democratic nominee come uh, whatever you call it, Tsunami Tuesday, Super Tuesday, Super Tuesday. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. I mean, she's going to be the candidate because they villainized this man as the ghetto candidate. It's just horrible. Like one of, one of the most happen. tragic political stories in American history, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, they're going to have to. You know, the, the media has already. I'm telling you, the, the media has got just about this entire election planned out. But if we're, if we're just honing in on the Democratic side, we already know that by Super Tuesday, it, I mean uh, Barack Obama, is, he's going to make it to Super Tuesday, and that's going to be it. That's going to be his whole campaign. Him and Edwards are going to have to drop out and go straight and go straight and endorse uh, Clinton. Now, yeah, Edwards. Edward, Edwards already dropped out, man. Yeah, no, I, I know he, he dropped out. Uh, I think what was it uh, Monday? I think he dropped out, but. Uh, I, I know he's going to uh, see because it, he's been. They've been in talks of uh, who his voters are supposed to go support now, and in the end, he stated. I remember back when he was still in the campaign, talk, he talked about how he uh, or he, he hinted that he wouldn't support, he wouldn't endorse anybody on, on his side if he didn't get the uh, nomination. He just let it die. But uh, in one debate, he went on ahead and admitted and said, "Yes, I, if I didn't make it, I would support any of the candidates on this table." Now that time has come. So all he's left with after Super Tuesday is Hillary Clinton. Obama's gonna have to do the same thing. I mean, it's it's, it's more of a le if there's there's really no option. You you could I wish you could say it's a lesser of two evils, but I mean, if there's no other option, you're all Democrats. None of you are gonna make it except Hillary. Hillary's beat all of you. So I mean, 
you're all that all that you're left with is just is just Hillary. There's no there's no option else. I mean, it, it's it's a damn vote, shame. Or, yeah, I mean, or you just don't vote. That's all it is. I mean, because I, I don't want to see Hillary Clinton's face. I think that there should be another Democrat that should have the opportunity to face uh, whoever the Republican candidate is. And believe me, I'm a little worried about the Republican side, too. You already know my views on that. I think that the Republican Party has been hijacked by social liberals. But I'm not going to get to that today. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get to that tomorrow. But um, let me tell you, this McCain, this anointing of McCain... It's really got me sick to my stomach, I'll tell you that right now. But. It's really a shame that I won't be able to uh, be here tomorrow to listen to your talk about the Republicans, because, I mean, i got so much I could probably uh, agree with you on and possibly disagree with you on, but, I mean, it's well, really we'll, we'll still, part. We'll still be talking about it. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to throw a show uh, Tuesday night, post-Super uh, Tuesday uh, results. Like posting one on Tuesday night for Super Tuesday? Yeah, just a special one so that we can probably see what's going on. And uh, what is it at nine? Probably at nine p.m. May- maybe ten p.m. Central Time. Maybe ten p.m. Uh-huh. Because I want to make sh- I want to make sure that everything is uh, said and done. We know who our candidates are, and uh, we can go from there, man. Well, I mean, I could just about tell you right now: stick a fork on Obama, and he's done. No, I already know that. The media is thinking. I mean, stick a fork in him, he's done. Yep, and it's sad, you know. I mean, because there should be somebody else running under the Democratic ticket. I, I don't want. I'm sick of seeing a Clinton. I'm sick of seeing him. Anyway, uh, hey, if you want to chime in with us and uh, talk, go ahead. Six four six six five two four eight six nine is the number to call. We're talking about Obama, the campaign, how the left of the political persuasion has thrown our country back fifty years in race relations. Uh, well, we don't want. I mean, I personally don't want to see Clintons running against whatever Republican candidate. I mean, it's it's enough already. We need. We just. I don't want to see him. And what's unfortunate is we're going to see him because these Clintons have turned Barack Obama into the ghetto candidate. And there's really my, my, my nothing. My problem with the Clintons is, as far as as far as I know, with just Hillary, not necessarily Bill, they just get nothing done. They're not going to get anything done. They're going to take the credit for someone else's job and claim, and claim it as theirs, and the media is going to let them. Yeah. Yeah, because, I, I mean, I, I mean, what, what are they going to get done? I mean, what, what is Hillary's agenda besides the status quo? I mean, I mean, maybe status a little quo. bit of... Sorry, uh, status quo? Yeah, yeah, or maybe maybe just a little bit of... Uh, no, I was asking... Liberal what agenda. Meant. Status quo. What? Status quo, I was asking what it meant. Status quo, like the same old crap, different plate, you know? Right, I mean, right. is it, this what we're going to see here? I mean, same shit, this, this, day. yeah, this is why I'm, I'm disgusted with the Democrats because, you know, I, you know, and I, I look, I think Obama's charismatic. You know, he, he knows how to say a speech. He's articulate. He's young. And, and I can see why the liberals were kind of mesmerized by this guy. But how the Clinton administration was able to get away with stigmatizing Obama as the ghetto candidate is beyond me, and why no Democrat wants to admit it. I mean, you see them all the time in the mainstream media, you know, playing with their schlong heads and saying, oh, well, you know, it, there, there's no such thing as race. We're not we're not doing anything with race relations. Bull crap. You can, you can listen to them on TV. You don't even have to be watching them. You can, you can tell they're lying. They're, they're lying their asses off. And, and, anyway. the media, and I'm telling you, the media is letting them. The media is full of uh, is about the demographic issues. They do not care about what the people want. They care about what what's good for TV. So of course, they're, of course, they're going, they're going to uh, enhance and exploit and in, in, in any possible way they can. You know, uh, the just the, the the issues, the irrelevant issues that have no relevance at all to the situation. Just to make just to uh, bring people away from politics and more on, I guess you could say, the lighter side of. Uh, TV. Exactly. Hey, we got another call here from the 312 area code. Hold on just a second. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Ghost? How you doing? I'm okay. I just been listening at your show here. You want to chime in? Yeah, I want to chime in on it. Okay. But now you know, you know, you know that this all right here ain't nothing but a game. You know that, don't you? What do you mean it's a game? They didn't throw Obama in there with Hillary. They had Senator Edwards. Now he's gone. 
that's the whole lick of the game. Now we got John McCain and the other guy out there. But like you said in the end, watch. It's going to end up Hillary Clinton is going in the White House. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what we've been talking about, man. I mean, what happened was the Clinton administration has just completely thrown our country back in race relations 50 years because of this South Carolina primary. She thinks she's reaching out to the African-American community when she does it. it, it it's just it's unfortunate, really, man. Well, I mean, all of them does it. And don't, and, and don't you, game. And number the game. Who, and, and if, if, if Obama wins, he wins. If Obama loses, he still wins because, for one, he walks away with all the doggone money that's been donated to him. So who loses? Well, you know, that's a good good way of looking at it. But then again, I mean, uh, unfortunately, you actually have a good segment of people that actually believe that whoever gets elected in the Democrat side is going to help them. Well, you know, and, if well, Obama's so going to get in there, then whole, he's going to need thing. everybody to get out on fairway the 5th that believe in change and get up off their butts and stop twiddling their thumbs and get out there and vote. Don't you think? Well, see, the American people are obviously tired of hearing uh, change, change, change. I'm going to I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, but I still wouldn't say that that you know, makes Hillary Clinton an alternative to Obama. But, I mean, the sad thing about it is the same people who talk about Obama think he won't win – Thing. If he gets in office, he'll get shot. I mean, those same people w- are, are suggesting that if Hillary Clinton wins the presidency, that he should be here vice president, and, and, and then vice versa with Obama, which is so sad. Well, I, I don't he'll never. He said he'll never be the vice president. No, I, 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 don't, I think that uh, I think what's happening here is that Hillary Clinton is going to win the na- nomination because she redefined Obama's base. Uh, she she basically, or not she, Bill, Bill Clinton basically injected racial overtones into this race, which initially had no racial overtones whatsoever. As a matter of fact, you had people like, like I stated previous, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, before the South Carolina primaries, who actually criticized Obama on whether or not he was African American enough. And then when the South Carolina debate came about, Bill Clinton injected racial overtones into the into the to the campaign by highlighting the fact that oh well you know uh, but Barack said Obama he, didn't say he wasn't black. The what's man that? used to work. The man used to work at Push. That's what I, that's what I'm saying. I mean the the, the guy. The man, but the man been around Push all his life. Been around Jesse all his life. Obama he, has. Mm-hmm. He's been right there all the time. Well, the thing about it is they were questioning... He's right here in Chicago at Push with Jesse all the time. All you had to do was get up every Saturday or hell, go down there through the week, and you'll see the man running all around Push back in the early, back in the late 80s, early Bush 90s. Lover. Yeah, he's been there for a little longer with Push. Yeah, but at the same time, um, you're talking about Jesse Jackson? No, Obama. Obama? Well, the thing about it is, is that these people that have have subjugated Obama as the ghetto candidate, so to speak, it was based on the South Carolina primary. Now, what the Clintons saw, and, and I suggested this early in the show, they saw the fact that more than 50% of the electorate was African American. Okay, so they knew that all 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 Clinton had to do was just inject some racial overtones into the into the base. All they had to do. Yeah, that took the place, Ghost, because here in Chicago, we didn't had. I'd have been out campaigning, and I really have seen a bunch of black women that's really saying they voting for Hillary Clinton just because she's a woman, not because of color, just because she's a woman. Well, you know, I I, I admit also that there is some gender uh, separation, some gender divisive issues that are taken forth here too. I mean, it's all demographic it. in the end. It's just... But the thing about it is, is that. What happened with Obama is the fact that the Clintons, by injecting racial overtones in the South Carolina primary, they turned Obama into the ghetto candidate by this. Okay, Before South Carolina, who was supporting Barack Obama? It was white liberals. Yeah, white liberals. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. Bill Gates. 
Yeah, these were white liberals that were supporting him. I mean, they were the ones that were uh, injecting money into his campaign. They were the ones that helped him win the Iowa caucus. The Iowa caucus was, what, 90% uh, white, Caucasian? Pretty so, much. I mean, they, they, it was actually white liberals that was his base. And then when the South Carolina primary came along, that's when Bill Clinton decided to take the media into his hands and, and inject racial overtones subliminally just by highlighting or suggesting the power of suggestion of the fact that, you know, hey, Barack Obama's black. I mean, he kept saying it over and over again. If you were watching the media at that time, that's all you saw was Bill Clinton's red face talking well, about. He kept saying that he was living a fairy tale. Yeah, he was talking about race the whole time. And what happened? Well, the people that were suggesting. Uh, the, 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 the African-American contingent that was suggesting that Barack Obama wasn't black enough, all of a sudden started pulling for Obama. And the whole African-American community started pulling for Obama. I mean, just hands down. And what happened? The media went in, the media went in, all the, the African-American communities with cameras and, and microphones, and they just started asking people randomly, uh, who, who are you voting for? Well, I'm voting for Barack Obama. Well, why are you voting for him? And you heard every kind of excuse other than something with political substance. You had people she in the... About King. She said King didn't do nothing. Who said that? Hillary Clinton. She said Martin Luther King didn't do a doggone thing for the civil rights movement. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's why it, it was around the same time as when Bill Clinton injected racial overtones. Well, it makes you really think in the end, too, uh, do, do these... Do these Clintons care anything about the uh, about race, or are they just using it as as an issue to get attention? Because if you notice with Bill Clinton, I know y'all remember uh, that that speaker that was at uh, Martin Luther King's uh, little speech that, or whatever they had. They had what was it last uh, it was last Monday? There was some kind of little speech about Martin Luther King, and uh, Bill Clinton was asleep. I mean, this is supposed to be the guy that cares for this is supposed to be the guy that's supposed to be the husband <laughs> for the uh, you know the the woman that cares for all or for human rights for African American community wants to give back to the African American community wants to give reparations and stuff like that to the African American community. He her doesn't want to do there, anything. Yeah, her husband's asleep Who asked over for there. Reparations. Yeah, well, talking about giving or giving money back, you know, to as uh, for stuff if for issues like slavery in the day, it's really a yeah. Well, here. we we you know, we we they need to get on with that. Ain't nobody trying to put their dog on. Bow down and wait on no dog on reparations. Well, that's, that's what's they sad about it. Is they think that the people will. They you think know, the people will. and four acres of land, and they ain't got that yet. So why should they wait on wait on a dog on reparations? They, they, they think people are. They think the African American community is just going to sit down and say, "Well, uh, you know, uh, we, you owe us for go for being for putting us in slavery." I mean, it's yeah, bad. Yeah, but we it's wasn't. We we they already spoke on that, and and, and we wasn't. We like two what a hundred and some years down the line from that, so how could that affect us now? Well, I, I think I, liberal. <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. It is a liberal way of thinking, but at the same time, Oh, you were heating it up. Ghost still there? I don't know. They must have knocked Ghost right on off. Oh, okay. Well, we got to keep on with the show until he called back in. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I don't know, but I know one thing. We got to keep on pushing this race issue. Out of any subject. See, I, I made a video does. about that little issue, though. That they start talking about uh, handouts and reparations for uh, for you know African Americans and black community. I said, now, we, if you're if you're, uh, I mean, I spoke out to a lot of African American Democrats, really, and I said mm -hmm. basically, if you're expecting them to give you anything for whatever reason, you, you've got to be out of your mind. Got to you know? be out of your mind. I mean, now, of course, it's one thing to want to be Democrat. That's your personal deal. I, I'm conservative. I support, you know, the conservative party. But I mean, if you if you're going to be Democrat, to expect these because you you expect the Democrats to say uh, because they said in the CNN they're going to give still you. Got, we still got people that's supposed to be our so-called black leaders. They're selling us out. They didn't sold us out 
and they're continuing to sell us out. They yeah. have, they ain't they ain't caring about their own black people. So what's so what's what's really going on here? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, really it's, actually, it's, it's the it's the media. I mean, it's it's all about. Sure, what's we got Jason Jackson, Al Sharpton. They don't give a damn about no black people. It's, it's all about what's good for TV. They ain't thinking about uh, the black community. What, whatever's good make the you know make the media look good. Whatever sounds good on TV, that's what they want to spread out. You know, as long as they're getting paid and while yeah. we're getting played, they don't care. I mean, if it makes you look good, that's all they're about. I mean, it's sad. And these are supposed to be the people. And if I remember correctly, Al Sharpton was trying to run for president. You know, this term, but dropped out early because he. I mean, I'm gonna assume he said he wants to run at it on a different term. But it really was probably because Obama hit, you know. Yeah, you know, we know what candidate got a letter from Martin Luther King the third. But had he been anything like his father, I got my reasons. He would not, he would not have, have sent them a doggone letter if he really, really sat down and really looked at or either cared about what they said about his father. Mm-hmm. That his father didn't do nothing. That's what they said, I got my reasons. That his father didn't do nothing. And the man really, all he had to do was just like all the rest of these old black leaders, sit back and get paid, but he died. That's all he had to do was sit back and get paid. He didn't have to do all that. He didn't have to march and continue to fight. He did not have to continue to put his life on the line. Our real black leader, when King got killed, that was it. We ain't had no more sense. So yeah, his son, recently Rosa Everett, Parks dropped out too after after Rosa that. Parks, yeah. you know, Mega Evers, you know, uh, uh, Marcus Garvey. We haven't had no black leaders since them. And if Coretta Scott King was here, when she she wouldn't have never said what she said about the humble Dr. Martin Luther King. If Coretta Scott King was still living, she wouldn't have said that. She wouldn't have said that. No, that one would have stood up for her husband. She would have stood up on that. But it, it really, it just it. really uh, shows you where, where we've, how far we've come since. You know, all, those all for the money, man. All yeah. for the money. That's, well, that's all it is. Is for the money. We got over eight hundred thousand kids in foster care. In foster care, being used as sex slaves, being beat on. Nobody is standing up for them. But we got these politicians spending millions and millions and millions of dollars for the dog on advertisements for their campaign and all that. Is that really y'all spending all that money? So when you get up in office, you got to owe somebody. Man, it's pitiful. It, it, Come on, this Bill. Is bad. <laughs> I mean, because uh, I, I really don't know what to say because, uh, you know, it's, we, we've got – We've got people in the African American com- community supporting both Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama for yeah, these he little issues Jackson, right here. He's supporting Obama. His wife is supporting his Hillary Clinton. So what the hell is going on here? I mean, they're, they're just trying, obviously trying to look good or make it sound like they're making a difference. Because these guys, if they, if you know, the people would actually do the research. I'm not just speaking to the African American community, but if the people would just do the research on the candidates and not base it on light issues, you never know what you would learn. You see, you don't hear enough on the media how Barack Obama wants to give driver's licenses to illegal immigrants, but you it'd just hear, sure, you hear enough be about sure, it. It would be really, really funny if they didn't all sit back and mastermind this whole doggone game, and in the end, they still sit down and talk to each other. It's, it's, just, it's just politics. People got to understand one thing, it's, it's just, just politics. TV, yeah. Politics TV. They ain't going to say anything just to get up in that White House. And when they get there, it's the action works and these that count. Not just, oh, well, get me in there, I'm going to do this. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. If you didn't do nothing in the community or haven't done nothing for the community, what the hell are you going to do in the White House? That's all and, I'm and saying. And people don't understand that because they're too, they're too focused on the irrelevant issues. You know, it's not an, it's, there's not enough uh, talk about what uh, Hillary Clinton's going to do about this war, you know, on terror, how she's going to end it. I mean, because we already know where she stands there. Where you live? Are they, are, they, are, they building, are they building condos and lofts where you at? Are they tearing down all the projects and stuff where you at, too? Uh, where, no, where, where I'm at, they're actually just building. Yeah, they're building more houses and stuff like that. 
Yeah, in Chicago, they didn't down almost all the projects. They're getting ready to build, and they build a number of condos and lofts and moving straight ahead. Yeah, I'm moving out here in Texas. They, they built a new middle school not really a year ago, I think, some new houses to go with it. Well, they, they just built a doggone school around the, about three blocks over here from my house, 60 million bucks. Yeah, that money's got to come from somebody. 60 million bucks. They got plasma TVs and everything in there. Even got a big old doctor's office. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, we 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 as black folks, all we do is sit around on our butt and complain and complain and complain. But when it comes down to really, really getting out there doing something, we don't do nothing. We run and hide. Well, it's, it's the liberal, it's the liberal uh, way of thinking, the slogan, you cut and run. It's all cut about uh, it, it's all about doing, you know, talking and no doing. And then you know, they want to add themselves. Oh, we were four hundred years of slaves. They kill me with that. Don't keep on bringing that up because y'all can't even hold a candle to them people. Mm-hmm. Here y'all are living in the modern times, and we don't. They back in them days, they didn't have nothing compared to what we got. Nothing. Nothing. But yet still, they want to compare themselves to that. You got your black leaders want to say we was four hundred years of slaves, but yet still, when now when 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 it all boils down, they still going to the white parties getting their money, private donations getting their money. They up there with the rich, rich, rich tycoons, rich uh, corporations, business owners and stuff. They not mm-hmm. putting that stuff back in the community because if they was, why are they building condos and lofts and pushing the people that can't afford them out? Simple as that. It's all for money. It's it's all for money. All for money. Like I got a partner, he's just not getting into politics. I said, man, please. At the end, at the end of each campaign, when it's all over with, all they're gonna do is shake hands and then have to get the job done. That's it. Yep. Well, I don't know what happened to Ghost. Uh, He'd be back. They they probably knocked him out because they they do that. They do that to other shows. They do to me too. But uh, yeah. at the end, of, at, at the end of the day, at, at the end of each campaign, and you got say you didn't amass about eighty million dollars or a hundred million dollars. Then after the campaign is over with, then you pay Uncle Sam their money, and you walk away with about twenty million. Lobbyist. And all you did was run around the stage and say, "I want to be president." Come on now. It's a shame. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I mean, it's just like whether you win or lose, it's like you're still walking away with something. That's right. It's not they dignity, are, but it's something. They are. We're walking away with nothing. Yeah. They are. We're walking away with nothing. Look at it for what it is. We're walking away with nothing. All they want to do is play this dog on political game with us over and over and over again. Every four years, every other four years, they play these dog on political tactics on us. They give us all this media doggone blitz, and they should know that people that spending that kind of money, really, you really don't need them. Because what they care about the people, the, the little people ain't nothing. They don't care about the little folks, because when they get in there, they gonna owe the big people. They gonna so owe them. It's never really, it's never really uh, reparations for the little people or the people that uh, are for the underdogs or the actual. <clears throat> citizens, citizens of the society, it's more or less the big guys, corporations, Yeah, the big guys interest. running the show. You got yeah. Warren Buffett. You got the, um, you got the, um, uh, 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 what you call that? The, um, dang, the, uh, man. What them people, they, they, it's a whole bunch of them. Man, I forgot that. The Rockefellers. You got all them. Got their great grandkids and stuff all up in there. You got, man, shh. Man, please, mm-hmm. please, it kills me the way they sit up here and you watch the show on TV and that's all it is, is a show. They put on a good performance, good performance, and then get that's the it. That's it. Get their ratings and then get out there. Then at the end of the day, they sit back all of them together in a room, drinking over a bill, giving them some wine. Oh, yeah, I'm telling yeah, you, that's, that's you the same. Good, they're, all, they're all good friends in the end, you know. It's, it's just, 
It's like they get on TV, they act like they're enemies, they act like they oppose each other strongly on every yeah, issue. Right. When all they, the when all they do, they agree they with you, they have to agree. It's just who did more for this issue than who else, than, than this yeah. guy. I mean, they all agree. At the end of the day, at the end of the campaign, they throw a big party and they all party. But yeah. in, the, in, the, in the end, nobody still lose but the little people. Because well, I mean, it's, uh, we it's still just nothing don't gets have done. nobody in there that's going to look out for our behalf. Yeah, no, nothing gets done. They're too, they're too busy uh, either, either making, these making TV look preachers, good. These you know, preachers or, and, these, and these preachers need to keep their butts out of politics. Mm-hmm. What the hell are they doing in politics? They I'm kill me. <laughs> the politics, what are the preachers doing in politics? What are they doing in politics? They got all these million-dollar churches, all these million-dollar homes, but yet still... They deep, deep into politics, but yet still they want to tell you, read your Bible. Yeah. Pay your tithes. That's, that's definitely they a big question for you story. right there. Hmm. But hey, uh, we're, we're starting to run out of time, and Ghost Show is supposed to be wrapping up in about uh, five, six minutes. I want to take this, I guess, just do it for him. His, uh, his, his show is supposed to be hosting tomorrow night at 7. I don't know what it's going to be, or 9, excuse me, 9 Central. Uh, I don't know what it's about, but I'm sure he'd be talking about it right now if he was here. I don't know what happened to him. But uh, I mean, it, re- it wasn't much of a big discussion tonight. I mean, he he just he got on for the first hour and just about ranted, and then uh, I mean that was it. After that, he uh, I mean, I called him like the second hour, the second hour, and then uh, how we, many uh, minutes we got now? Yeah, we got like uh, three or four minutes. The show's about oh. to wrap up in a minute. We got to get out their way because because we've we've t- we've assumed control of his show now, and so we got to let him know. We got to let people know whoever is listening that uh. It's going to be going got on knocked tomorrow. out, y'all. Hmm? He, he haven't called back in, so we're, you know, pursuing on with the show. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm, I'm definitely like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna check it out on Tuesday. He said, uh, Super Tuesday. Uh, oh yeah. Like he, they're gonna, gonna be, try to have a show and, and you know. And if they really want everybody to really get involved in voting, like here in Chicago, it's cold as hell. Hmm. Why don't they let the voting times be around the summertime when you actually come out and cast your vote? Because, because it's like they don't care about the community. They're about what gets the job, what they can get done on their time. The so winter their time, time here in Chicago really, they're not getting everybody involved because everybody is not coming out in the dead of the winter. You got only diehard people that come out and vote in the dead of the winter. Now, if they, they care really to vote at all, I mean, get involved, they should do it in the summertime. Because we've got so many independent voters this term. I mean, it's like people don't even care about even coming out. I mean, whoever has faith. In their party is all are all the only ones that are con- you're going to consider voting. And you heard Ghost say it himself. He's conservative and he don't even want to vote for anybody. He he hate he couldn't see basically hates the liberal party. And on top of that, uh, the conservatives the majority of the conservatives to him have just turned into social liberals. So he's he's just going. He said he's staying home election day and not he ain't trying to vote for anybody. And he thinks that anyone that's conservative will do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, Ghost say his Republican party has been taken away. Mm-hmm. Well, dang, I, I mean, I really don't know. I don't know. But uh, uh, we got three minutes left. I think uh, we're going to have to close it on down here in a few in a few seconds and let it let these next uh, people come on in. Where are they? I don't I don't know actually what the next show is going to be. I because I, <clears throat> I remember last week I actually wanted to. Uh, I was looking around after the ghost show. What's your went, show? Huh? What, what, what you got a show? Uh no, no I have a I do all my blogging on YouTube. So you know about the bill HR nineteen fifty five? Do what? Bill HR nineteen fifty five. Uh no I don't I don't think I know about that. The homegrown terrorists, homegrown radical terrorists act of two thousand and seven and other purposes. Take away oh. your freedom of speech and everything else. Oh you 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 are talking about the uh, Patriot Act or something? No, it's a, it's it's a new it's a new bill they're trying to pass. It's already in the Senate. Mm. You gotta you gotta uh, take it and type it in your bar, Bill HR 1955, and then hit search, and then Senate Bill 1959. I pop up with it too, cause they both the same bill. Yeah, well, basically, uh, um, you know, on my channel, I try to talk about a lot of the stuff like that, political issues. I'm more, I talk about religion and and uh, I talk about social issues of that nature as well. But I'm mostly political, and I uh, talk about the, the campaign as it is for, you know, right now. And of course, I have my support videos. 
Uh, in there as well. They're exposing these candidates and these political parties because all they doing is rich, rich, rich millionaires and billionaires. They filthy rich, man. Mm-hmm. I was, I was actually, uh, after Ghost Show uh, last week, I was looking around to see if there were any more political shows going on. But, uh, man, I think his was the last one for the night as far as politics goes. But, I mean, and... and because I, I, I considered uh, making a show on here, but I thought, nah, because I got a, I got a YouTube, I don't need to do it on here. But of course, I, I love to, I love to put my two cents in on, uh, on, on what I, on other shows. Of course, I'll come put my two cents in, but uh, won't make my own. Well, what time? Oh, he got. Oh, wait a minute. Is it eleven? Well, he got out of something. Huh? Those are really. They, he didn't even call back. Yeah, uh, I guess he got off and, and thought that is uh <laughs> that that is supposed to just be. Oh, he got twenty one more minutes. No, no, no. Seconds. According to my according, unless my clock is off, he only got one minute. Well, because he's, he's only supposed to be here from nine to eleven. That was his uh, scheduled time. He started at nine into okay, eleven. Okay, there you go. It's oh, popping yeah. in. Yeah, it's gone. Hello. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess that's I guess that's supposed to be it for a show. So uh, I guess that's everybody that's still listening. So who listening. are you, King Kong? You King Kong? Yeah. Oh, okay, King Kong. I'm the the poor, poor people's, people's uh, campaign, campaign yeah. Inc. here in Chicago, Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Martin Luther King that. started it back in '67, but he didn't live to kick it off. So so oh yeah, you got this U2 thing. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, well I'm gonna look at this. All right. All right, well, uh, I guess whoever is still listening, I guess Ghost will have his show up and running again tomorrow at 9. I won't be there, but I'll, I'll definitely check it out on the – I'll check him out on, on why you don't want to? Why you don't want to get a um, a Blob Talk radio show? Oh, it will be because uh, I'm, I kind of – I really don't have a, a my own phone. I just sort of kind of – I'm between phones, and when I can use them and stuff like that. If I'm, trying, I'm trying to get my own phone, actually, so I can actually – I might consider getting one if I get my own phone, but I normally do my blogging on uh, YouTube anyway, so there's really no so How you feel about Ron Paul? Do what? How you feel about Ron Paul? Well, uh, if I could talk about that, but I think we're out of time, aren't we? It's 11. Yeah, it's 11. Oh, yeah, we're out of time. Okay. Well, I, I'll tell you this, though. You can check out my YouTube, and uh, that'll tell you everything you need to know. Hello? Well, I guess everybody, if anyone's still listening, those who uh, have a show up and running tomorrow at 9, 9 o'clock Central.